As Toronto's mayor says we should remain cautious, Brampton's mayor, Patrick Brown, is calling on the province to lift mask mandates in schools. He says we should follow Quebec's lead as that province is set to allow students to learn unmasked starting March 7th. Alberta, meantime, already lifting its mask mandate in schools and exempting children under the age of 13 from its mask policy in all other settings. But does the science support that move here in Ontario? To discuss, we welcome back to CP24 tonight, Brampton's Mayor Patrick Brown, Dr. Fahad Razak, General Internist at Unity Health and member of Ontario's Science Advisory Table, and Dr. Barry Pecos, York Region's Medical Officer of Health. Thank, thanks so much to all of you. Uh, Mayor Brown, let's start with you. Where does this call to unmasked students come from? Well, this pandemic has been really hard on, on children, and we want to create an environment that is easy to learn. I look at what other provinces are doing, other jurisdictions around the world, that they are adapting, they are reopening, uh, and they are lifting some of these uh, COVID provisions. And, you know, when Quebec made this move, I asked uh, our top physicians in, in Peel Region, those at Osler that deal in infectious diseases, uh, and I asked them for their advice, and they said, yeah, it's time. And uh, you know, I, I think it's important to follow the science and follow the data. Um, you know, we need to put COVID-19 in the rearview mirror in a safe and responsible manner. Um, and, you know, for kids who have lost so much over the last 18 months, you know, we, we really, it's, it's time to put them first. Have you had conversations about this with Dr. Lowe? Does he agree? Yeah, I've spoken to Dr. Lowe. I've sp spoken to the infectious disease doctors at uh, at Osler, and you know there is a, a sentiment uh, very clearly amongst the phys physicians I've spoken to that that we're ready to do so safely. Okay, uh, so as you mentioned, Mayor Brown, Quebec is planning to make this change in March. Alberta already removing its mask mandate for students. So, Dr. Razak, what are we waiting for here in Ontario? Yeah, I, I totally understand uh, Mayor Brown's sentiments. And, you know, what I'll say is that it's been extremely hard and especially hard on our children. And I have two children under the age of five who are in public schools and getting a mask on them is not easy and <laughs> keeping that mask on them is not easy. What I'll say is this is one of the areas with the pandemic where we actually don't have great evidence. We know that masks in general work extremely well at preventing the spread of the, the disease and at protecting people. What we don't have great evidence around is what it does when you put it on young children in terms of protection. It's not because we think that young children are somehow different. It's because they may not wear it as effectively. The kind of masks they're using are not the high-grade masks we tend to use in adults. So in that group, I, I would say, I, I have to be honest, the data is less compelling. But we are towards the tail end of this wave right now. And especially among our under fives, we don't have a lot of mechanisms to protect them right now. We can't vaccinate them. What we have is good ventilation aeration of schools and masks. And for the five to 11s, the vaccination rates are still very, very low. Less than 50% of kids in that age range have had their second dose. And so for this group of children, I think having a mask still is reasonable for protection. I wanna be honest again, the evidence is not as strong here, but it's really about just getting us through that final stretch of the pandemic while we do all the other things we can to protect children. And that involves getting the rates down in the community as in general, getting more people vaccinated in general, all those other steps. Okay, so let's talk more about where we're at in this wave. Dr. Pecos, is Omicron still a significant threat in our community? I mean, would you support ditching masks in schools in York region? No, not at this time. And I think uh, Dr. Rezek is, is definitely right that, you know, some of the peer-reviewed evidence certainly isn't there. We've gathered a lot of experience over the past uh, two years on, on the effectiveness of of masks in school children of various ages. I think what's really important to recognize and, and to remember again is, is that it is one of the only measures we have in children. And I have five myself and there's no question there are some harms. My youngest who is in SK grade one and grade two through the pandemic, you know, language development isn't as good as the other kids. But right now we are at the tail end and I would be really reticent to, to, to remove them now. When is the right time? You know, I'm not entirely sure, but it's not at the same time as we're removing the proof of vaccination and, and opening up. It's going to be, you know, three, four weeks later, which Dr. Moore has indicated is when it will be reviewed. Okay, I want to bring up a tweet that we have from one of your colleagues, Dr. Abdu Sharkawi. He shared his thoughts on this idea about ditching masks in schools. Uh, on Twitter, he says, Asian school children were masking eons before COVID-19 was a thing. No evidence of oxygen learning mental health deficits. Just the opposite. 
kids can learn to be better models of caring and responsible towards others. So can everyone else. Uh, hashtag masks work. So, Dr. Razak, what's your response to this? Do you seem to agree? Yeah, look, I, I know Dr. Sharkawi really well and I work with him. Um, he's right. Um, culturally, certain parts of the world have gotten very used to wearing masks. Clearly, we have no evidence that children in East Asia, Japan, et cetera, have anything worse in terms of competitiveness on academic performance, growth, other measures that we care about. It is hard here, though. We're not in those cultures. I, I think it is a big leap for the typical family, the typical Canadian children, the typical school setting for us to continue to wear masks at this point. But I think it's doable. We should look to other parts of the world where they have done it. And, you know, like Dr. Pick said, we're not looking at that much longer. Dr. Moore has signaled a few more weeks. Look, I want to get these masks off my children as well. I just want to do it safely. And remember, when you have outbreaks in children, it's not just the children who get sick and we worry about kids, especially things like long COVID or inflammatory disease in children. It's a spin out effects. It's the parents who have to be at home. It's the economic effects. So there are wider effects. So protect the kids, protect against the spin out effects. Keep it in a little while longer. I don't have a hard number for you either. I think Dr. Moore's recommendation of a few more weeks is reasonable. Uh, and that's what I would suggest as well going forward. So I guess I'm just wondering, Dr. Rizak, um, how will a decision be made if data is a problem? And then how will we know whether that was the right decision when we're not tracking data in schools? I, I'm going to say that I think they should be tracking data in schools more rigorously. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, no quibble with me there. <laughs> uh, what I will say, though, is that uh, as any part of the pandemic, especially something as complex as the Omicron wave, where we have lost track of the number of people infected, you want to do things in stages. So as Dr. Pekas said, we just had a relaxation around some other parts of public health measures. Give it a couple of weeks, see where the numbers settle. Th this could be very well the next step with masks and children, with masks in schools and then give it time to settle and see what happens and react. So part of the pandemic is being humble. When you see things moving in the wrong direction, you have to be prepared to move quickly. And, you know, to the credit of many of the policies of Ontario, they have been able to do that in the past. They have held on policy or reverse when they need to. I hope this will be a similar example. And Mayor Brown, you have a young son. So on a personal level, what would this change mean to children like yours? Well, you know, I take my son to lessons. He's two and a half, and he's told to wear a mask uh, at those lessons. I just think it's unreasonable. Um, it's impossible to have a toddler uh, wear, wear a mask. And, you know, I know there is people that are uh, reticent. You know, we've been closed down for 18 months, and they're not ready to have restrictions lifted. You know, we were in the same position in January. I was on the show, and I was... Uh, pleading to reopen schools. And the same critics were saying, if you reopen schools, then the cases were, were going to skyrocket. Um, and fortunately, the government listened to the, the plea that I made and other, others in the medical community and, and others in public service. And we, re we reopened schools and the cases didn't skyrocket. Our hospital capacity right now in Brampton is better than it was before the pandemic started. And what this comes down to is saying, trust parents. If you have an immunocompromised children, of course, you're going to have them wear a mask. You know, what the Quebec government and other health units around Canada have suggested is in close quarters, people wear masks. But, you know, where you're separated at desks, you're not going to have to spend eight hours a day wearing a mask. And I would close with this. If other public health units around the world and in Canada feel that it's safe for children to be in school without a mask, then what is different with the public health data in Ontario than in Alberta or Quebec or elsewhere. Okay, a very interesting topic. We'll have to follow this story very closely. Thank you for your time tonight, uh, Mayor Patrick Brown, Dr. Fahad Razak, and of course, Dr. Barry Pekas. Thanks to all of you.